Hello! About a month ago I released a, a video showing a proof of concept that I made of how Salesforce could integrate with ChatGPT. Um, and so I created a, a little screen flow here that lets you interact with the chatter feed of an opportunity record. So I had made up a discussion between a customer and someone from the org. Uh, and if you ask in the prompt to summarize the discussion, for instance, it would automatically get the context of the chatter feed and react on your prompt based on the context. So in this case, it gives me a little recap of the discussion, but you could ask anything, ask it its opinion, if it thinks that the sale is likely to close based on the discussion that took place, many things that you could do with that. Um, and so I received a lot of comments and feedback, uh, people asking how it works, uh, if they could implement it, uh, what's the logic behind it, etc. So I thought I'd make a little follow-up video just to show what's behind the scenes here. Um, and so, yeah, this is just a, a screen flow that I have built and I have embedded on the Lightning Record page. It's super easy. You can just click on the gear icon, edit page and add the flow to your screen. Uh, so I'll show you a little bit what the screen flow looks like. And it's a proof of concept, right? So it's not fully built. It's not following any sort of best practice. It's just me playing in a corner, seeing what uh, we can do and thinking of ideas of how it could integrate with Salesforce. So basically it starts with an input screen where a user is invited to put a prompt. Um, then we run an Apex action. So it's custom Apex code that I have in my org that I'll show at, at the end of the video how to build. Um, so the first step is basically querying all the related feed item records for the record ID that I'm passing as a parameter. So we're basically querying all the chatter posts that are attached to the record from which the screen flow is launched. And then we're serializing them in a JSON format. So what that means is it's just instead of um, getting records, we're just getting a string uh, that's organized, that's just displaying the actual records uh, for each chatter post. We'll use that in the prompt that we're going to send um, to OpenAI, to ChatGPT, to give it as context. So here I'm just giving it the record ID and the, the Apex method will run and return me a string containing the feed item records. Then once I have that, I'm going to actually make the call out. So sending my request to uh, ChatGPT, to OpenAI, uh, using their API. So you have to have a basic understanding of what an API is if you're going to try to make this work. Uh, you'll also need an account at uh, OpenAI. I'll, I'll go back to that uh, a little later in this video. Uh, so basically the parameters that I'm giving is one, the model. So this is the AI model that we're going to use. Uh, OpenAI has a bunch of them. Text DaVinci 003 is their latest one and most powerful one. That's the one that we hear about that has 175 billion parameters. Um, and then, so you, you have a couple of parameters. I didn't include all of them. I only included the ones that I was interested in. Um, so the second one is the actual prompt that I'm going to give it. So think of the prompt like what you would actually write in the UI of ChatGPT on the web if you were to access it. And that's kind of where the magic happens. So I structure my prompt every time so that it's giving a context that I'm telling it that it's uh, chatter posts in a, in a JSON serialized format. And then I'm passing it dynamically the result of the previous Apex action that we ran right above. And then I'm passing the actual prompt dynamically that I got from the first screen where the user inputted it. So really like this gets replaced by the actual prompt and this gets replaced by the actual feed item records. So it's kind of like if you went into the, the web UI and just said uh, fake discussion, person A told person B something, person B replied this and that, and person C told person A, blah, blah, blah. And then at the end of that story, you just say prompt, summarize the story, and ChatGPT will reply with a shorter version of the exchange that you had created. That's basically what I'm doing here, just programmatically, okay? 
temperature. I won't go into more details. Uh, it's just a parameter to say how kind of creative you want the model to be allowed to be. So then I'm just assigning a, the, the response to a variable because I'm going to be using it a little later. Uh, and the next step is displaying another screen where I'm putting the response that I got, so that variable that I just assigned, and offering the user another input. And now we're going to go into sort of a loop, but it's not really a loop, where if there's a correction, meaning if the user has put another prompt, then I'm gonna call the API again with the context, with the first question and the first answer and the new prompt that the user gave. So it's able to react on the context plus on the exchange that just took place uh, in the previous step, right? And so after that, it's assigning some variables and we're going back to the screen and starting again. So technically, as long as you're putting something in that input box here, it'll just keep going. It'll just call, call, call again. Uh, the API until you leave it blank and you click finish, in which case the flow ends, basically. That's the logic for the flow. So you're gonna you're gonna tell me, well, nice, it's the flow itself is easy, but how about the apex actions? How do you get these? And you're right, that's the tricky part. Um, so I'm not a developer. You don't necessarily need to be a developer to be able to make it work. Um, of course, I would not recommend migrating any of this in production without uh, doing further investigation and looking at the code in more detail and fail safing it and the, the, the usual checks and validations. But you could try to build these classes using ChatGPT. That's how I did it, just to see how good it is with Apex and how it can help you write some code. And it's actually pretty good with a little bit of back and forth you can get something working. I just did that in uh, a couple hours just to see if it would work, and it did. Um, so you basically, technically, all you need to know to do this is, well, a basic understanding of what an API is, and uh, you need to know that if you want to be able to call an Apex method from low-code automations like flows, uh, the method needs to be invocable. So then once you know that, you just have to describe in plain language what you want to chat GPT. So let's go ahead and say, can you prepare a Salesforce invocable Apex class that takes a prompt as input, calls the OpenAI API, and returns the result of the callout gonna make it very vague. I'm not even getting into any details here. If you provided more information in your prompt, you would get better result, but I just wanna highlight how good it is by just giving it that not so great prompt and see what it comes up with. So let's see. Okay, so I received a network error probably because the servers are busy. I'm just gonna reload that and run it again. Okay, so it came up with some code. I'm not gonna analyze the code at this point. Um, there's probably a lot of things that are wrong with it. It's just to illustrate that it can give you like a skeleton or something that, uh, that you can start off, right? So. I'm going to copy that code and just paste it into a new Apex class that I'm going to create. So I'm going to my developer console. I'm going to call it test for video. Oh, I already have one. Okay. Test. So this is just quick and dirty. Okay. I'm going to paste whatever it gave me here and the dev console has this tab called problems where it will illustrate and flag any problems that exist with your code that prevent compiling. So here it tells me on line 20 that there is this problem. Let's say I have no idea. I'm just going to copy it 
and go back to ChatGPT and tell it I received the following error on line 20. And if I send that, it will automatically understand what the error is, not all the time, and, uh, and provide an updated version of the class or the part that didn't work. So it's writing it right now and it'll give me an updated version of the class. And technically, by using back and forth and feeding it the errors that you get, it updates the code and eventually you'll get something working. It's far away from best practices, but just to show the power of the tool and how good it actually is at programming stuff, which is quite impressive, right? So I won't let it run the whole way. Uh, there are a couple of things that right away are wrong there. Um, like for instance, the endpoint is not the right endpoint uh, because the endpoint didn't exist back in the training set that ChatGPT is based on. So if you wanted to have the right endpoint, you'd need to look at the documentation for the OpenAI API. Um, you'll need to have an account with them anyways to run um, queries or callouts against their APIs. So there is documentation there that you can take a look at and you'll find the endpoints to call there. Also, it put the authorization token in clear in the code. That's not best practice. Salesforce has actually uh, something in the setup where you can store your credentials in a encrypted manner and then just reference a variable in your code. So I would strongly encourage you not <laughs> to use that line of code, for instance, but replace it with named credentials. There are a bunch of other things, but like already right away, I can see that that's wrong and that you shouldn't do that. It'll work, but it's far away from the best practices. Um, yeah, so that's, that's how I built it with a little tweaking here and there. I did the same thing for the JSON serialization of feed item records. I just described my need in plain language here. And eventually with a bit of back and forth, I had a working class. So it's really cool. I just wanted to do the exercise of, okay, I don't try to understand anything. I'm just going to try to see if ChatGPT could create that by himself by just guiding him uh, and just providing feedback that I get from the dev consoles on the errors that are in his code. And I ended up with a solution that works, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so that's just a proof of concept. Uh, if you're interested in actually uh, playing with it or putting that in your org in the sandbox or something or you have other questions don't hesitate to reach out either leave a comment or send me a message uh, don't hesitate to send uh, that video to your network as well I think it's quite promising and a lot of things that you can do with it because I just put it in this little proof of concept on the chatter feed but really you could embed that in any Salesforce process that you want right if you have agents that need to write messages, um, recurring messages, you could prepare a draft version of that message in the flow of in your process. Um, you could use that as well in conjunction with uh, document generation apps like Conga, for instant, instance. I think it would be quite promising to come up with a draft that users are able to review and amend or for the email that's sent along a document many things that, that we can do by passing information in context to ChatGPT. So super exciting. Don't hesitate to get in touch uh, if you're interested. And uh, that's it. Thank you.